Hello, and welcome to Accessing the Past Through Virtual Reality, First World War Landscapes. I'm Todd Ogle, and my co-presenters are David Hicks and Thomas Tucker. Each of us are from Virginia Tech. In our presentation, you'll learn about our team and the purpose of that team, the processes and products that we use and generate out of our work with students, see two case studies, and talk about our next steps. Our team is made up of faculty and students at the university here, Virginia Tech, and we engage students in the tools and processes that we have undertaken over the years to create digital cultural heritage projects. Everything from science, art, and technology to historical research and instructional design. And we have a guiding or compelling question that we use across our projects, which is, if this place could talk, what would it tell us? We introduce and support those students who work with us in learning about in situ data collection, archival work, analysis, and uh, use experts as our partners from the field to introduce disciplinary and procedural ways of thinking. We utilize a common array of tools that are employed today in these types of digital projects, including laser scanning, using uh, a variety of products, photogrammetry from both the air and the ground of terrains as well as points of interest and in objects themselves, 3D modeling, programming, sound design, video, both typical 2D video as well as 360 degree video, and motion graphics, as well as historical research and instructional design. We collaborate with historians, archaeologists, private companies, and the historical sites themselves and the caretakers of those sites. And these products are all part of creating virtual and augmented reality experiences to be used by teachers in museums in online exhibits, as well as on-site experiences. We have two case studies to share today. One is from our work with the Dig Hill 80 project in Flanders, and the other is with the Hill of Vauquois in northeastern France. Both are First World War sites, and both have unique characteristics that lend to immersive experiences. The Hill of Vauquois is located near the city of Verdun in northeastern France and was an important strategic position to both the Germans and the French during the First World War. The fighting there evolved from street fighting and house-to-house -house fighting while the village still stood to what would be thought of as typical trench warfare to mining warfare that extended for the entire length of the war right through to September of 1918. It's a very large site and our goal was to create a virtual experience that allowed you to get a sense of what it is, was like to be there without having traveled there yourself and to learn about the facts and the numbers and the history of the place in an immersive way. We also wanted to explore how teachers would implement such an experience in their teaching of the First World War. The initial work was performed in 2016 when we visited the site as a team and performed laser scanning. That laser scanning was performed over the course of about 10 days 
and collected data from the surface features as well as a good portion of the underground tunnels. As we go beneath the surface here we see the complex of tunnels that we were able to scan on the German side in more detail. There are an elaborate series of galleries, rooms, kitchens, infirmaries, power generation spaces, all connected by tunnels dug through the sandstone of the area. As we fly through the German side here, we're able to see the type of structural supports that were used and the cabling for communications and electricity. Air pumps were used to circulate stale air out and fresh air in, and there were numerous facilities to care for the men and uh, house them while they were barracked there. On the surface again, we're now viewing a trench on the German side or north side of the hill. And as we fly out and away from those lines, we get a larger view again of the surface of Vauquois. There are tunnel systems still in place on the French or south side of the hill as well, as well as the enormous craters that lie in between them and some as many as 40 to 50 meters deep today. The next step was to take that data and create a virtual reality experience that incorporated the ability to not only see and hear the experience of being at Vauqua, but to be able to touch it as well. scale experience has been on display at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington DC as well as uh, being accepted at the SIGGRAPH Immersive Pavilion for 2020. What the uh, viewer sees when they are in that tunnel is a completely virtual environment it's based on the data that we collected at Vauqua and while in the tunnel they were able to reach out and touch the physical walls carry a lantern that they use as their light source and interact with other objects that we have made replicas of uh, for the experience but in schools in our local area where they use the system we are unable, of course, to put the full exhibit in their computer lab. So they see what is in the video on the left. Filters and large connecting rooms called galleries, as well as attack tunnels toward. And what they're able to do is look around and walk through the tunnel virtually while simply in their computer lab. And we use a technique called redirected walking to allow them to walk back and forth in a fairly small area while feeling like they're walking in a much larger area in the virtual tunnel system itself. The Dig Hill 80 project was an opportunity to apply some of these same technical tools to a active archaeological dig. This was a rescue archaeology operation performed in Flanders near Ypres, um, which 
had, was fought over for the duration of the war and held at various times by British, French, and German soldiers, but uh, saw a lot of action as part of the Messine Ridge campaign. And the site was to be developed into homes and a crowdfunding project was put together to raise the funding to be able to do a proper archaeological uh, excavation at the site. And we joined the team there in Belgium to laser scan and perform photogrammetry and shoot 360 video as well as scan objects and uh, artifacts found from the site. There were a number of uh, pre-war uh, civilian sites and uh, objects that were left and survived. In some cases um, entire pieces of pottery and personal effects were, were found that survived the entirety of the war, but uh, elaborate German and some uh, simpler British trench systems also survived under the topsoil which had been left on the site. The site itself had not been worked by farmers because the local villagers had heard stories that there were an enormous number of men buried there and that proved to indeed be the case as several mass graves uh, were found on the site from fighting in 1914 and 1916 and a few uh, sporadically in between those times. This is an example of one of the point clouds we have from uh, point of interest photogrammetry. It's a, the remains of a German dugout that were in very, very good condition. We are able to put these sorts of point clouds online for people to view and interact with right now, but the interactions are, are fairly basic and there's uh, not a lot to be done with them other than get a view of what, it, of what was there. We also have point clouds of the entire site itself as well as um, augmented reality that we put together for viewing the site as it looks uh, today. This video on the right is from the summer of 2019 when the road work before the houses began to go into place was being undertaken and we have a painting of the Miller's house the, and the windmill which was on the site located approximately where the painting is overlaid in augmented reality um, to give you a sense of what was there prior to the war. That project was intended to give us a test case to look to create uh, immersive experiences that allow us to shorten the time from data collection on site to sharing of that data on virtual reality, primarily on the web. And both the Hill 80 project as well as the Vauclaw project have had a real effort put into moving from virtual reality that has to be downloaded and installed on a high-end computer to sharing those sorts of experiences on the web so that a larger number of people can access them and learn about First World War history and archaeology uh, at a, in, a, in a wider audience and get that education and outreach out to more people across the globe. And to do that we are using some tools that are in the family of WebXR and the example in the video in the upper right hand corner of your screen is where we are with the Vauclaw experience today. In addition to uh, wanting to be able to share to a wider audience, moving to these experiences being available online 
allows people to use them in the current situation we find ourselves in where getting together in schools and sharing virtual reality equipment is not a possibility today. So rather than uh, waiting until a museum exhibit can be used again, we've developed these online experiences. And so folks are able to continue to work with what we're building today. And we hope to move more and more of our projects into that setting as we go. At this point, we'd like to move into taking questions and answers in the live portion. And if anyone is interested in following up with the team, our email addresses are included on this slide. And we are um, looking forward to hearing from any of you who are interested in talking more about these projects. Thank you.